Hi, good morning. If stress didn't disappear in our terrestrial world, would it disappear in the celestial world? In our metaphysical world? Hey, we didn't finish, we haven't finished with this world. I'm talking to us about <clears throat> metaphysical world. We are subject to forces, we like it or not. Many forces, mainly speaking. Subject to a force of contraction and relaxation. We learn this from our body. Contraction, relaxation. When we want to have something, we the force of obtention, not the force of abstention. If we say this, there is another force that contradicts our force, counterbalance our force. It's not counterbalance, not the word. Contradict us in such a way we make an effort. We are providing an effort. Many. The force of levitation. Which kind of force is pulling up, up? There is a force of self-aggrandizement. It's like yeast, you put it in the dove, you notice that's going up. But the person has to be vigilant in order not to let it go up, 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 because it's going to hurt him. It's a force of extraction, etc. So it's not our topic to speak about these things. It's just something very important. For instance, let's speak about yoga. Yoga today, the way it is, the way it was, it's not the same, by the way. Today is a lot, 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 lot commercial. It's like the martial art when it was in the Eastern world, in the Eastern philosophy. Martial art is very deep. It's not just the body, mind, body, spirit. <laughs> when it hit the US, it became, you know, commercialized. You know what I'm saying? So we're not talking about this. Yoga relation with God. That's what yoga means. But when to contract and when to relax? That point. That's a very important one. If you know, when you contract, you don't have much of choice. In a tense, like in a sense, like if you want to obtain something, you want to move physically, intentionally. Something is contracted in your body. Something is contracted in your mind. That's the force of obtention. That's contraction. Relaxation is a big question mark. Do you relax voluntarily or involuntarily? If you do it voluntarily by submissiveness, here where resides the harmony of life. This is where resides the disappearance of stress. I'm talking about psychic action. If you don't know when to relax, to do it, to submit with submission voluntarily, you will do it involuntarily. And that's the pressure. Look at the body, for instance. When it comes to the nervous system, we have nerves that we call sympathetic, parasympathetic. No, people know them. Before, when you mention these things, it seems like only the, you know, the neurologists that are familiar with this, with this anatomy. You don't need to be a doctor. You need everybody is aware of this, these things. But what they do, uh, perhaps it's not everybody is aware of them. You know, one, some, you know, those sympathetic, parasympathetic. Some they trigger muscle contraction. Others, they trigger muscle relaxation in the body. This is where the balance is. I'm talking about the body face. Things that, that are involuntary actions. Such as the heart beats, you know, the stomach, lungs, respiratory. A lot of things in the body. But this is where the balance is. This is what they say. In other words, that's it. Everything is functioning by itself. They will be regulated by you, the way you think. 
all the sicknesses today, I'm talking about sicknesses, whether physically, whether mentally, because a human being thought probably these he doesn't know in life when to stop. As I mentioned about what is yoga, it's just stop to know where is the contraction, where is the relaxation. It's hard. What do you need to be? I don't know. You need to be a neurologist. Neurologist, you're a doctor. Do you know what is life? How it is like? It is like how to face life. It's not anybody can tell you this. There's only God who tells you this. If you have any link or any kind of liaison and you accept it. And I'm a very optimist that a lot of people, even atheists, is curious, he wants to know about these things. We are sharing, not imposing. Perhaps principles are from Islam, but I am not really going to talk to Muslims only. I talk to every human being in this world. You know, <clears throat> uh, prayers, what does it mean, prayer? Prayer is the only one adoration. It's one of the five obligations, the only one that was revealed to the prophet when he was in heaven, on seventh heaven. And the thing is, it was revealed to him 50 prayers, 5-0. On his way down, he met Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. He told him what happened. Then Moses told him, I had already an experience with the children of Israel. I don't think your nation will be able to accomplish these 50 prayers. Ask God to reduce the number of prayers in 24 hours. So anyway, back and forth, it was revealed up to five. But you'd be rewarded as if you prayed 50 prayers. But anyway, back and forth. This fluctuation, ascending, descending, what is this? You know, the prayer, as I said, the only one. Why God didn't give him a carpet from heaven? A flying carpet. That's a big honor. Pray here. Or you have to go to earth. The action in heaven, in your metaphysical world, are accomplished on earth. They are accomplished with the gravity. They are accomplished by your effort. But there's something is very important. An action here equals the expansion of heaven up there. One minute here, or I should say one day here, equals a thousand years in heaven with, before God. That's what it is actually written in the Quran. So the time that you spent, you cannot spend all your life to have this presence of mind, you are a human being. You cannot have this, you're not an angel. The thing is, what compensate this forgetfulness? Prayers. So the prayer in during the time when you had this, you accomplish this prayer, it is as you're doing it in heaven. So stress, our topic. Prophet, peace be upon him, he looked at someone of his companions was praying. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but you, by seeing them, you can have. So you are standing up and then you go 45 degrees, okay? You know, parallel, your chest is parallel to the floor. So usually, if you know these people who are not aware of this, they do this and then go back, look at this directly. So he saw him doing this and then going all the way down and down. He saw him, then when he came, he said, go back, you did not pray. He could have, you know, just taught him from the beginning. But he let him go and do it again. And then he did the same thing. He came back, he said, go and pray again. To show you the gravity of the situation. Are we talking just about the prayer? No, something has to do with heaven, yo. It has to do with the stress of this world and then heaven, the stress in heaven, yeah. 
Then he showed, show me, show me, prophet. He said, when you go down, this action here, this action standing and you go 45 degrees with your legs, <clears throat> we call a rokua. I don't know what to call it in English. I know prostrating is by maybe sujood, but anyway, send me something, correct me. He said, you have to relax here. We call it in Arabic, Tuma'nina. Tuma'nina, the meaning, Tuma'nina, that means tranquility. But it has the meaning here and is one of the pillars of, uh, of, uh, of the prayer. If you don't do it, the prayer is not prayer. To understand that the punctuality, that is the prayer. A punctuality with the action, that is the stations. These are the stations in life. So he said, you have to relax and then stand up again, and you have to relax. In other words, do not stay contracted, because this action, you see action, you say God is the greatest, and then you come back, and then, then you do this. The second action, there is another beginning to a new action in life. I'm not talking about the prayer. It's a new life, it's a new situation. This cannot be the first cadence followed this cadence is following the first cadence i don't know the pace the first and you come this is different you have to eliminate the third the first one by relaxing this contraction this is has to be finished here with god is the greatest you know what to say subhana rabbi three times and then you go back you start contracting into new action and then here, you know, don't do this and go directly. One thing here, leave this aside. Do you know those balloons to use it during in birthdays? When you, when you let them go, some of the balloons, they have an air inside. There's a gas or air, they call it helium. It has a tendency to go up. You relieve it, it just goes up. It's not like a regular air. The, you know, whenever you move in any situation in life, within prayer is just, you know, a kind of the diagnosis of life. You move, the conscience goes, where does it go? As the balloon with the helium goes, where does it go? It goes with the habit. It goes with the routine, it goes with the air, it goes to our occupation, preoccupation, daily activities, it goes. The role of the person when you are here, yoga, if you call it yoga, relation with God, I'm not asking you to pray yoga. The presence of minds, that's the most important point. Who occupied your mind at the time of that punctuality? You bring it back. Do you see this? Look at the balloon a thousand times bigger than that. When you bring you need an effort. What are you developing? Two forces here. You're developing biceps, maybe a little bit triceps, but definitely the dorsal, pectoral, some deltoids. You bring them. Any time you bring, you bring them, you develop something. You start a new action, the same thing. You move, you move. The mind loses the presence of mind. Any action, the way we are in our life. You cannot attribute a time to an automaton. Automaton is acting, behaving mechanically, without any conscious awareness. Presence of mind, very good. But who? That is the bootstrap, the real in our life. Getting back to the forces here. Contraction to move is a very simple. There's nothing with kind of contraction. It's just to go down. You relax it. You're going back. You relax it. You know, these actions on earth, these are the same actions person. What is he doing here? Of course, you know, perhaps we don't, if you cannot understand it, just we have to disbelieve in this. No, accept it. Be careful. The prayer is... The trouble, the vehicle of navigation, on earth, 
transportation. In the sea, we say voyage, voyage. In heaven, we say odysseys, from one situation station to another. You cannot have, when you leap, you cannot have that cadence, that force, forever. It will disappear. It will be diminished by the forces from the beginning that you leap with or you relied on. These are, this is that will regulate the prayer. It's on earth, but the pro, I mean the obligation was revealed to the prophet in heaven. There are stations here. There are stations there. Here there are actions physical actions with spiritual results unseen to the naked eye. There, it's no longer this, but there will be images, results. What was spiritual here, it will be resorted to the person to see them and to enjoy life. Thank you for sharing. And uh, I'll see you soon.